team throughout the week at times. They are training on their own at times. And this is a team, while just put together, has experience with each other. They play the similar styles. They have players that were down at preseason together with the first team and players that have played a lot of games together and an opportunity now to show off, to show what they can do. Last week, USL kicked off. Seattle Sounders to one of the six new MLS two teams this season in the USL defeated the reigning champions, Sacramento Republic FC, 4-2 to two at home. Starfire Stadium in Tacoma, Washington, and really put the stamp down for all of the two teams. Toronto FC then traveled down to Charleston. After that, they took a 2-0 lead down in Charleston before eventually falling 3-2. to two. Charleston beating the newly expanded Charlotte Independence last night at the same score, 3-2. to two. And the Red Bulls in Rochester now an opportunity to get off to the first start of the season for the New York Red Bulls too. You see there at left back, Colin Heffron throwing it in to Conrad Plua. Conrad Plua, a native out of Poland, came to the United States, attended high school in the United States, went to Seton Hall University and played both striker, center midfield, holding midfield and center back throughout his time there. And he lines up at center back today for this New York Red Bull 2 team. And this is the man everyone is excited to see. Leo Stoltz, number 19, the Herman Trophy winner as the best player in all of college soccer last year. Uncertainty whether he'd come to MLS or not or take a shot at Europe. Fell a little bit in the draft, and New York Red Bulls got a gem in him. He hasn't appeared yet for the first team. You see here on the ball wearing the armband, 24 years old, out of Germany, had an incredible college career, over 20 goals and 20 assists in 63 appearances between UCLA and George Mason. Red Bulls dominating the ball early, moving it around. This is a Rochester Rhinos team. Last season, they had a lot of moving parts. They were able to put it together. The second best defensive team in the league behind Orlando City, who's now, of course, in Major League Soccer. But they struggled to score goals, only second in the league in goals. Their leading goal scorer, J.C. Clark has moved on to Minnesota United, and now this team's looking to put a few new pieces together. They feel like they have some dangerous options. They have a lot of height at, cent at center forward. It's one of their options. They bring a Cape Verdean off the bench, and Steven, who stands at six foot five, and between Valeski and Rolf, both of them stand over six foot one. So it's going to be a big threat for them, and the Red Bulls will have to be conscious of that between their center backs in Plua and DeFonte. Hefron here at left back playing it to DeFonte. DeFonte, a New York native, played for the Westchester Flames in the PDL, as well as three separate stints in Portugal. As this ball gets through an opportunity. First look here as Brandon Miller comes out and takes it cleanly. It was Chris Sanis there running on, trying to run onto that pass from Manolo Sanchez. This Red Bulls team, they'll float between a 4-3-3 and a 4-2-3-1. They're playing in a similar style to the first team. Coach Wolnick said when I spoke to him yesterday, there is no reason for these players who practice all the time in that system to play anything different in this Red Bulls 2 team, and it doesn't help head coach Jesse March much if these players come up to his system and are uncomfortable or unaware of how to play it, and so he's going to stick to the same style. They have similar principles in their soccer beliefs, he was saying, in the need for high pressure. As you see Hugh Alex Dixon there with the cross blocked. So to go out for the first corner kick of the game, he said they had similar styles, similar philosophies, and since they've worked together, it's grown more and more. Coach Wolnick had the chance to play with Jesse Marks in Chicago after he left the Rochester Rhinos, who he played for for a year. And once he got there, he said he learned a lot from Jesse Marsh, who was the midfield general of those Chicago Fire teams under Bob Bradley. And a lot of that has been passed on now to this Red Bull 2 team. First corner taken. Coming in, Castano with the clearance. Blocked in and cleared off the line. And then it looked like Jamie Thomas with the goal line clearance. A big moment there. And now a chance to counter. Obakop plays that ball into the middle. Referee right on top of it. Makes that call, but a huge early play there for the Rochester Rhinos. The corner whipped in. It looked like the final touch in the end came off of Tony Walls, the captain, and it was cleared off the line by the New York Red Bulls. A huge clearance 
for the Red Bulls so they don't start out behind. And if you're looking for all your USL news, visit the new USLsoccer.com, get the latest news and live stats, and check out the new social media hub. USL rebranding this year into USL from USL Pro, expanding rapidly 24 teams this season. It's going to be an exciting year. There are the old powerful teams like the Rochester Rhinos, the Charleston Battery, and the Wilmington Hammerheads. But you also have these MLS two teams like the New York Red Bulls too, and as well as next week's opponent, Toronto FC too. His tackle comes in there from Rolf. Clean tackle called by the referee. Now Valeski's away. Valeski on his right foot. A chance to shoot here. Castano with the big save. Goes down to his right, but still able to make the save back on Valeski. And it'll go out for the second Rochester Rhinos corner kick. Have you visited the new USL Soccer.com yet? Get the latest news and live stats and check out the new social media hub, USLsoccer.com. Now a chance. You see here for Valeski coming in. They love how dangerous he is as a striker. They feel like a lot of the opportunities they created last season, he'll be able to finish in another dangerous chance off a corner kick. The Rochester Rhinos lethal right now off these set pieces and Castano's able to save it from going right over the line. Cassano, see here the corner kick coming in once again for Rochester. It almost bounces, hit on the volley, and Castano right there in front of Jamie Thomas, who just made a goal line save to save that one. And the Red Bulls on set pieces right now, a little bit on their heels. Dangerous service coming in consistently for Johnny Mendoza in the last preseason scrimmage for the Rochester Rhinos. They defeated Syracuse 4-0, and Mendoza had three assists off three set pieces. So his service there is dangerous. And the Red Bulls will have to, New York Red Bulls too, will have to watch out for that. Pat McMahon with the ball up the right side to Mendoza. Plua is able to cut him off, has it under control, clears it out, but right down the middle of the field. Red Bulls dominated possession over the first five minutes, but Rochester has had two great set-piece opportunities. And Valeski with that breakaway opportunity that Castano stood up and saved. Santiago Castano, a Queens native, a dual national, United States and Colombia. He's played for multiple U.S. youth teams from the U14 level all the way up to the U20 level. An opportunity to potentially play this summer at the U20 World Cup for the U.S. U20 team. And a guy who's been a homegrown signing for two years now since 2013 for the New York Red Bulls. And a great opportunity for him to start consistently now. A bad turnover in the midfield there. And a chance to counter now for Rochester. Rochester very comfortable playing against MLS names, MLS teams. They defeated DC United last year in the U.S. Open Cup at home 1-0 at the time. Of course, DC United was the holder of the U.S. Open Cup. And they have one big claim to fame. They are the only non-MLS team to win a U.S. Open Cup since Major League Soccer came into being in 1996. They won the 1999 U.S. Open Cup, beating four straight MLS teams on the way to the top. They get a great home crowd at Salen Stadium, and anyone out there in Rochester watching along, we welcome you here today to kick off your season as well. As Castano takes that one cleanly, rolls it out for his right back, Thomas. Jamie Thomas coming out of St. John's University. Played all four years there. Played a little bit at midfield as well as on the back line. And Holtz Wolneck feels like he has a full-time right back there in Thomas. A guy who's really able to hold down that right back spot and maybe get forward along that line, whipping some crosses for a guy like Sonis up top. A guy who can really finish on the top of this Red Bull diamond. Similar to what? They see in their first team in Bradley Wright Phillips. Flua there shields the man off the ball. Looked like Valeski he was in a battle with. Long ball over the top for Sonis. Sonis holds up and Brandon Miller is able to take it. Brandon Miller four years now with the Rochester Rhinos. In his first two years, he sat behind the goalkeeper of the year in USL. 
And then last year, he was in a little bit of a goalkeeping battle, but was beat out in the end by Become a fan of USL on Facebook for exclusive league news and interactive content. USL on Facebook. Thomas here with the throw in. Red Bulls playing simply here in the back. Stoltz running the show. Stoltz dropping deep. To possess, has played at attacking midfield as well as a more of a holding midfield role in his career. And a player, a great opportunity for a player like him. This New York Red Bulls 2 team has a lot of different purposes besides just winning games. There's development, but there's also a chance for a player like Stoltz or Obakop here. Marius Obakop gets tackled away in the end by Pat McMahon. Players like them to get fresh legs to to challenge themselves in competitive games against full teams. As you see behind that section, the Rochester Rhinos traveling fans. As New York Red Bulls prepare to take their first corner kick. It's going to be the captain, Leo Stoltz. Rochester Rhinos have been dangerous from their two corner kicks. Can the Red Bulls counter to the far post? Flicked away in the end and a foul called by the referee on that far side. And it's going to be a free kick to the Rhinos. As you see the replay coming in here, Stoltz lofts that one up to the far post. Trying to get a man on it. It looked like Sonis there on that far side, but he gets called for the foul on that battle. Good win by Michael Defonte there. Turns well from Sonis. Sonis now has slid up top. Red Bulls working, Red Bulls two working the ball around the back here. Castano gets the ball. Very slowly taken out of the back now. Not in any sort of rush as Thomas cuts in field. So for the New York Red Bulls two, yesterday they were able to train alongside the first team as the New York Red Bulls first team headed out to Columbus for an MLS encounter tonight against Crew SC. But first today, they have this kickoff for the first ever game in New York Red Bulls 2 history. And it's a project and a development that the whole club is extremely excited about. But a lot of uncertainty as well of what it will become, of how it will go about. Coach Wolinick said he discussed some of the things that happened for the LA Galaxy who launched the two team last year, but he said pitfalls and mistakes are always going to happen. Situations are always going to come up. There's really nothing you can do about it sometimes. You try and be prepared and you power through it, but he really likes the makeup of his team. He feels like he has guys who he can really work with, guys who really have the opportunity to step up. And a couple guys coming out of college we talked about here like you see with left back Colin Heffron, guys who they feel like with one or two years of pro experience can really take some steps. Obakop gets it taken off there by McMahon. Great job standing him up there by Pat McMahon. But the clearance is intercepted by Plua, and you see how calm Plua is on the ball. Like I said, played in center midfield for years for Seton Hall. Led the team in assists his sophomore year. So he's a guy who never panics on the ball, very comfortable center back with the ball. A chance to counter now here for Dixon, coming down the left side, gets the cross and tries to leave it for Rolf. Great read in the end by Heffron, the left back for the Red Bulls, and he clears it away. Colin Heffron with a fantastic defensive play here. You see Dixon, acres of space. You see that pace that got the Houston Dynamo so excited two years ago. And Heffron follows up the play and is able to get in there before Colin Rolf can take the shot, and that's a big play there from Colin Heffron. Heffron, a graduate out of Dartmouth, a Long Island kid. So another local flavor for this Red Bulls 2 team. 
He played all four years at Dartmouth University and was with the first team in preseason playing as a left back under Jesse Marsh. Picked up a little bit of an injury and wasn't going to make the team in the end, but got an opportunity to play here with the Red Bulls too and still a chance to prove himself to the New York Red Bulls, still a chance to play professional soccer, play full-time, train five days a week. Make sure to follow the New York Red Bulls 2 on Twitter and Facebook at NYRB2. Join the conversation for this match on social media using the hashtag NYVROC. Follow New York Red Bulls 2 on Facebook and Twitter at NYRB2. Very rare that you get to see a franchise be born. Very rare do you get to see history made, but we have that opportunity today and it's very exciting. Dixon has been exciting down here on the left wing. He cuts in this time on his right foot. Gets the shot away. Blocked by Leo Stoltz. Pushed back out now wide to Johnny Mendoza. Mendoza's closed down by three defenders and then the referee makes a foul call. It looked like it was a clean tackle early. Mendoza on the ground made contact with the ball but it's going to be a free kick right on top of the box and Castano has had a lot of work to do and he might have some more to do here. See Heffron stepping out. He's played well defensively early on. Mendoza tries to go around them. Could be on Heffron. Could be on Obakop. We can't tell from that replay. But either way, it's going to be a set piece. And Mendoza's been taking the corner kicks. And he's been taking them dangerously. But it doesn't look like he's going to be the one standing over this one. As you see the man there in the wall. Sam Tosh, the shot comes over, curled over that top right side by the captain, Tony Walls, but wide. Castano had his post covered as well. As you see the shot here from Walls, you see the idea trying to curve it around the wall and sneak it in that near post. But pushes it just wide, and the fans in the South Ward, who we are so glad came out to support this team, give him a big cheer, don't forget. You can get tickets at NewYorkRedBulls.com anytime. And game day tickets as well if you show up and there are still some available. Goal kick knocked back into the attacking half. The Rochester Rhinos have come out and they've looked dangerous. They've looked comfortable. As Rolf lays it off here, Dixon's wide open on the far side. If they can get it there, it looked like Garzi there with that cross. And the linesman saying it went off Jamie Thomas. And it's going to go out for another corner kick, the third of the game for the Rochester Rhinos. And Re New York Red Bulls, too, have to be better here. As you see, this cross here from Garzi doesn't look like it got a touch from Jamie Thomas, but the linesman makes the call. And now the Red Bulls have to defend. Both corner kicks so far have been dangerous. Both had to be cleared off the line. This one coming in right at Castano. He's able to make the easy save there. Gets it out quick, and now the Red Bulls, too, will look to counter. You see this take here from Cassano. Able to get up high with all the bodies around him and take it easily and tries to launch the attack immediately. The New York Red Bulls, too, they want to play aggressive. They want to high press and force Rochester into turnovers when they can up the field. And you see that from the distribution of Castano. Mano Salve is pushing it out wide. Obakop has switched sides now. and He gets it pulled off him. You love to see how Obakop, his mentality in the game, he wants to take players on. He wants to get himself in the box with the ball, and he continually is going to be a nightmare for fullbacks in both MLS and USL. Mano Salve spraying it wide. Victor Mano Salve was a member of the New York Red Bulls U23 team last year, the NPSL team that won the National NPSL Championship after Chatt over Chattanooga FC. Fans, the New York Red Bulls 2 next home match is this Saturday, April 4th at 3.30 p.m. against Toronto FC 2. For tickets and more information, visit NewYorkRedBulls.com or call 1-844-22-RBNY2. That's 1-844-22-RBNY2. Castano Coming out here, trying to challenge, goes in for the tackle, makes it clean. The ball still alive now as Castano's still out the field. And now the referee makes the call, and he's going to show a yellow. Oh, no, excuse me. I got confused. Velisky there with his hand up for the yellow card. Referee makes the call. A wild play there from Castano. 
He comes far out. He makes a very good tackle initially here to keep Valeski from getting in to the box. The ball gets stuck under him. See if maybe the referee, I think, calls it for here, trying to stop the play in between his legs. Dangerous play, not for any sort of foul. It was an impressive tackle from the goalkeeper, you have to say. Castano's had a lot of work to do early on, but he's kept his goal safe. And now another set piece for this Red Bulls 2 team to deal with. It looked like looks like Johnny Mendoza again. This one comes in. Castano with this kick save over his head. I think he was surprised that that made it over the initial defender, and he kicks it out. You see here Mendoza, set piece service has been dangerous. It just sneaks over the top of the defender there. It looked like Jamie Thomas and Castano with a late reaction and now another corner kick. The last one was taken easily by Castano. Let's see how this one goes now. Cleared off that back post by Tsanis. Still alive for the Red Bulls. Jamie Thomas looks to head it out. Now Menel Salves tries to bring it down. Shielded out in the end though by the left back. Tosh. And poorly thrown in directly to Thomas and Thomas is fouled and the Rochester Rhinos knew it was going to be tough in this game one because no one's ever seen the New York Red Bulls 2 play and so it's tough to scout a team whose roster was just coming together whose players have never really played together whose franchise didn't exist until today and so that was difficult for the Rhinos also for them this is the earliest they've ever started in USL play normally season starting mid-April to late April and this season starting now in the end of March. And so it took a week off of their preseason training. It, had, it forced them to move up a couple things. They're actually missing one of their players in Anua Abasi, who was playing with the Baltimore Blast in the Arena Soccer League. And he's still resting after coming off of their championship loss in the final. Heffron battling there in the corner with Mendoza. And it's going to go out. For a Rhinos throw in. It's the fans in the South Ward not happy with that one. McMahon in his second year with the Rhinos. We'll take this throw in. Headed out by Stoltz. Heffron clears dangerously at the top of the box. Still alive. Rochester pushing it right back in. Dixon's going to take a shot. Big block in the end by Mano Salvis. Or excuse me, that was Jamie Thomas on that block. Red Bulls looking to counter. Sonis up top. Hasn't gotten much service after the first few minutes of this game. And he still looks for some. Looked like, excuse me, that block on that shot was by Kyle Zajuk, who's the only academy kid starting in this game. Tyler Adams, the first ever signing for this Red Bulls 2 team. A player that everyone's really excited to see. Started most of the games in the U-17 World Cup qualifying down in Honduras for the U.S. U-17 team that was able to secure qualification. It's out with an injury today, and so he's not dressed to play for this team. So Zajuk takes over in the center midfield as the only academy kid, academy player in this starting lineup. Tosh here. To throw in. Not in much of a rush. Cleared high up the field. Stoltz was on the ball a lot early in this game. Has seen less possession though over the last 10 minutes. He'll look to get on the ball and run the show a little bit for the Red Bulls. Some space here on the top of the box. Cleared away in the end by Rochester. And Manolo Sanchez as well has been very quiet now after the beginning of the game. He and Stoltz are the guys that New York Red Bulls too want to get on the ball, want to get them a little bit of space, allow them to attack, allow them to create for their teammates or themselves. So you see, see Zajuk who has fit in seamlessly so far in this game, really held his own so far in what is a tough midfield for Coach Lilly with Mike Garzi. And Tony Walls. Tony Walls was voted Defender of the Year for the Rhinos last year with that stout defense. Played center back most of the year, but now has moved to center midfield. 
Follow at USL on Twitter to become a league insider, join club conversations, and have a chance at exclusive giveaways. That's at USL on Twitter for all your United Soccer League action. Obakop here, out wide left, has continually tried to take guys on in this game. The young Cameroon U20 international in his second year here in the States. Has seven appearances so far for the first team for the New York Red Bulls as well as some reserve league appearances last year, but now he's getting the chance to play for the New York Red Bulls too. Alex Hugh Dixon has been a threat all game down this left side. Last second tackle coming in well, well there from Mike DeFonte. See the replay here. Dixon is dangerous in open space and a well-timed tackle from DeFonte to get in there, clear the ball, and not get called for the foul. Dixon's been a threat down that left side all game. A couple shots. He had that dangerous cross that Heffron cleared out as well in the first half. Now he takes this corner kick. Castano punches, but still alive, and Stoltz has to clear it off the near post. Castano struggling there a little bit on that delivery. You see Dixon laying it in a dangerous area. A lot of bodies are out. Castano, he's forced to come out, punch that one, and Stoltz there on the line. Both Leo Stoltz and Jamie Thomas have been very important on the lines. As you see here, an argument now between Castano, the goalkeeper, and it looks like Colin Rolf, the hard-nosed forward for this Rochester Rhinos team. He had two goals and an assist last year. This one now at the near post. Plua clears. Red Bulls in the two. No one out for them to pick it up. But it goes out tamely off the return ball and out for an easy throw in. Excuse me, an easy goal kick. Plua here. Aware of the danger at the near post, does a good job sweeping that one away. And Rochester wasn't able to connect with their second ball. Rochester's had the better of the looks so far in this game offensively. New York Red Bulls, too, as expected, taking a little bit of time to settle in offensively. You always have that question, what comes quicker, the chemistry offensively or the understanding defensively? between teammates. They can both be dangerous if there's a little bit of time where you don't know each other that well on both sides of the ball. But this Red Bulls 2 team knew what they were coming into. They knew, everyone was talking about it before the game, how good defensively Rochester has been and how they have to keep it tight at the back while they push forward for these first goals. But who will it be that scores the first goal in franchise history? It's always a mark you want to put down as a player. Put yourself into the record books. As Manolo tries to lay that one off for Manuel Salves. And the foul called. Manolo struggle. Oh, excuse me, Tsanis up top. Quickly played now by Stoltz to Thomas. Thomas able to keep it alive deep in the corner. Tries to beat his man. Taken off him in the end by Dixon who came back to help defensively. And you see that intelligence there from Leo Stoltz to recognize that quickly taken free kick, puts it on a plate for Jamie Thomas to run onto. And those are the intangibles that you get from this player. 1860 Munich, reserve player growing up in their academy. Came to the United States to George Mason University, played for a year in the CAA under George Mason University before transferring to UCLA. Counterattack now. For the Rhinos and a perfectly timed tackle again by DeFonte. Ref deflects that ball off. Veliski to Castano. Now the Red Bulls look to counter. Sanis lays it off into some space but can't get it to Manuel Salvis. Obakop coming in field now. He wins that ball. Manuel Salvis has acres of space here. He'll look to strike it. The deflection fortunately goes directly to his teammate. But it's well cleared out in the end by Tosh. Manolo Sanchez has pushed out wide right. Swapping places with Sanis. Stoltz will see if he can get himself an acre of space. Great work between him and the academy kid Zajac there. And Kyle Zajac has fit in seamlessly with this team. And when I was talking with Coach Wolnick about these young kids, 
about the physical ability to play against hard, fully grown adult soccer players week in and week out. He said it's something we'll have to watch for, especially with a guy like Tyler Adams who signed full-time with this USL team as the left foot shot comes in from Sanis. He brings it down off the chest. Nike is a proud partner of the USL. Follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all the latest Nike soccer information. Nike.com slash soccer as well. As I was saying, Coach Wolnick was saying for his players, as you see the shot come in now, excuse me, the goal kick going out now for Rochester. That was the early chance. Another big tackle from Michael DeFonte on that play there to help Castano out. And there he beats Valeski to the ball once again. But Coach Wolnick was saying he's worked with the U18 kids on this team. He's worked through the academy and their IQ and their technique is going to have to overcome at times maybe the physical disadvantage they have with the older players. And he believes that they have that soccer playing ability to allow them to step up that level and play with these adult players. Sonis in here for the first chance. Cleared away by Brandon Miller. Still alive for Manuel Salvix. He goes to strike it. The referee blows the whistle, and it's going to be a penalty kick. The New York Red Bulls, to get their first great opportunity of this game. Sonis does a great job keeping this alive. Brandon Miller knocks the header out, and Manuel Salvix, as he gears up to take that shot, on the backswing there, it looked like Mike Garzi is the one that's called for the foul. Tony Wall's talking to the referee, but it's his duty as the captain. But I do believe the foul was called against Garzi. And for the New York Red Bulls, too, the opportunity to score the first goal in franchise history is going to go to, of course, the captain and the Herman Trophy winner, Leo Stoltz, the man out of Germany. Stoltz puts the ball on the spot. Brandon Miller to face him down the Rochester Rhinos support traveling supporters group behind the goal trying to make some noise to get Stoltz a little bit nervous try and get him off his game Stoltz now an opportunity to open his account and open the franchise's account he steps up with the right foot shot Brandon Miller with the huge save Brandon Miller diving to his right able to beat that PK back from Leo Stoltz Stoltz here took it very calmly, looked very comfortable, was able to get it to the side. Not a poorly taken free kick, but he wasn't able to get it in to the side netting where it was unsavable. And Brandon Miller, credit to him, tip your hat, he's able to stand that one up. Dixon was looking to launch the counterattack back the other way. It was stolen off of him. Now the foul's going to go against Tony Walls and the referee. Now he's going to take a moment to talk to the captain out of Rochester to calm things down a little bit. Ryan Dos Reyes, our head referee, our assistants are TJ Soblicki and Joseph Zawitowski. Our fourth official today is Dave Breckner. The referee, Dos Reyes, has had a lot of work to do early on, a couple goal line clearances, a couple questionable foul calls, and then a penalty kick awarded but not finished for the New York Red Bulls too, and we remain at 0-0 in this inaugural game in their USL history. Rolf does a good job with his back to goal there to keep it alive. Dixon trying to play it into the path of Valeski. Castano immediately gets rid of it towards Obakop. Obakop battling with McMahon, and he loses out. And you can see that that extra edge, that grit that you have in a meaningful game that you just don't see in a reserve game. Coach Wolnick was talking about the difference between this and a reserve game. And he said it's a standalone game. Reserve games are normally the next day. So you see most of the guys who don't play in the first team game the day before. But now you have teams that are, are, are training to specifically beat opponents, training to work on things week in and week out. And you have that grit and that extra edge from the opponent because they're looking to get three points and they're looking to move up the standings, get themselves in playoff contention or get themselves higher up the table. And so it changes a lot of the complexion of the game. And it's something that can be a huge added benefit to the New York Red Bulls now that they have these players like Stoltz, like Obakop, 
getting this experience. Heffron at left back. Heffron, an Albertson Academy kid from Long Island. Went to Friends Academy for high school and then to Dartmouth. Has played solid so far at left back. Made a couple big tackles. Zajuk drops it back. Remind you, the five Academy kids are allowed to be called up per game, per USL rules. Academy kid distinction for them. They have their set rules. And then for the Academy kids, they maintain college eligibility if they play in that way. And so they're still allowed to leave and go to college. All USL regular season and playoff games are available live, free, and in HD on YouTube. Connect with the USL YouTube channel today. USL on YouTube. It's one of the great opportunities. You can watch all of these young players from across the country. You can watch so many talented players that are playing out their time right now in USL. It's such a great competitive league. As the ball's put out, Conrad Pluitt looks like is down on the turf with an injury. And the last guy you want to see down, he struggled with tore his ACL two separate years while he was at Seton Hall after having great starts to the season. He's a fantastic soccer player. Mentally, he does such a great job of seeing the field. He's a guy Coach Wolinek would hate to lose. But this USL season, it's exciting as you see the fans here in the South Ward out to watch this game. Coach Wolnick, his first opportunity to see his guys really battle against a different opponent. You've got your USL Originals. You've got the Harden teams. You've got your Rochester Rhinos, the Originals, and the Richmond Kickers, as well as the Charleston Battery. You've got the Wilmington Hammerheads and the Pittsburgh Riverhounds, who are teams that have been around for a long time, have had great U.S. Open Cup runs, have had great USL seasons. Then you've got these two teams, the New York Red Bulls too. Six other new MLS two teams that have opened up this season, along with last year you had the LA Galaxy 2, Los Dos. Conrad Plua being helped off the field here. And the New York Red Bulls are going to have to make their first of five eligible substitutions. You heard me correct there in USL. As it's always been, you have five substitutions per game over the normal three that you are used to. And Conrad Plua is going to unfortunately be taken off for the first of those, we have no confirmation on what the injury is right now. If we do receive any, we will get it to you. He's working with the trainers right there. And a substitution. Another academy player for the New York Red Bulls coming in. Marcelo Borges is going to check in. We'll see if he checks in to center back or if he slides another player over for the Red Bulls into that position. Or just the will be the second academy player to appear for the New York Red Bulls too. So far in this game, he's played at right back, right mid, and center mid for the U17, U18 team. Last year, he started 15 of 16 matches with the goal. He's played at right back for the most part. But he's a player that likes to get forward, that likes to push into the attack. And we'll see what Borges is able to do in this game. This confirmation comes in. He will check in for Conrad Plua. The Manoa Poland native is done for the day. And it looks like Borges will check in at left back. Colin Heffron will push from left back in to center back to take the spot of Plua. And everyone else for the Red Bulls will remain the same. Jamie Thomas touch jumps up on him, but it works out for him in the end. Looks like Manolo playing that ball back. Heffron with the long ball up the middle. The New York Red Bulls, two. Still trying to find that opening goal. They had that penalty kick attempt for Leo Stoltz in the first half, but he wasn't able to put it home and get his first Red Bulls goal at any level, and he wasn't able to open the scoring for the inaugural New York Red Bulls 2. Heffron now will slot in at that center back position alongside Mike DeFente. Knocked out. It'll be a throw in for Jamie Thomas at right back. Kyle Zajic. 
continuing to really run the show at that holding midfield position. He's a deep-lying midfield. He likes to create. He likes to set up his teammates when he can. And has a lot of attacking potential. And he's one of the academy players who can, will have continue to play with this team. Don't forget, a full season coming up next week. The New York Red Bulls, too. Their next home match is Saturday, April 4th at 3.30 p.m. against Toronto FC2. For tickets and more information, visit NewYorkRedBulls.com or call 1-844-22-RBNY2. That's April 4th at 3.30 p.m. The New York Red Bulls to three straight home games to start the season before they go out on the road. They host the Wilmington Hammerheads the week after that. And so a good mix of original USL teams in Rochester and Wilmington as well as MLS 2 teams in Toronto FC 2. Goes out there off of Sanchez on that far side. New York Red Bulls, too, still looking for their first chance. Rochester Rhinos and the Red Bulls, too, have both had good goal-scoring opportunities. Valeski early on in this game, a breakaway one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one with Castano. He wasn't able to finish. Leo Stolt, a goal-scoring opportunity on his penalty kick attempt as Borges gets his first bit of action. And you see Coach Bob Lilly moving his dangerous winger, Dixon, from the left side straight to the right side to challenge the academy kid in his first minutes off the bench in Borges, and that's the type of experience you just won't get anywhere else. That's the cutthroat thinking that you get at the professional level when you're playing for full three points, and it's going to make Borges a much better player. There's a foul called here. Obakov coming in, called with the foul on McMahon. Him and McMahon have had a good battle so far. Obakov tried to take him on two or three times early on in the game. McMahon stood up strong. Novakop called for the foul there. Johnny Mendoza has been dangerous consistently from set pieces. This one to the top of the box. Headed away again by Jamie Thomas, who has been so strong so far in this game. For the Red Bulls, too. Had a clearance off the line in the opening minutes. And has made a couple other big plays, especially on set pieces. Jamie Thomas will throw in. Just north of 42 minutes have gone so far in this first half. Still nil-nil in the opening game of the season. And the franchise opener for the New York Red Bulls, too. As the referee stopping that play there to go back and give a yellow card. The Red Bulls still a little bit frustrated because it looked like Manosalves had space to turn into and attack, but it was called back in the end to give the yellow card to Colin Rolfe. So our first yellow card of the game has been issued. As we get official confirmation that it is Rolfe. Rolfe did a good job early on getting Valeski in on a couple dangerous opportunities. Almost had a chance himself off an Alex Dixon cross to finish, but Colin Heffron of the New York Red Bulls was able to follow it up and make the tackle, and Valeski's into space again. He's got Mendoza to the middle, but he shoots, saved by Castano, and he gets the bobble after. Great job there from Castano to get off his line, make the save, and then get up and save it again. Valeski here, the second time he's been in on that right foot. This time, Castano guesses the shot correctly, reads the shot correctly, excuse me, is able to make the initial save and then cover the second rebound. Rochester continues to find success through Valeski down this side as Obakop gets into the middle and his cross is blocked by McMahon. What a great battle it's been so far on this wing between Marius Obakop and Patrick McMahon. Obakop there walking back, one of the four Major League Soccer lone down players and one of those other four, the captain, Leo Stoltz, will take this corner kick. Second corner kick of the game for New York Red Bulls, too. Stoltz curls it into space. Brandon Miller coming out and takes it easily. The fourth-year Rochester Rhino goalkeeper able to easily handle that corner kick. Not in a rush now as we get down to the last few minutes of this first half. It's been an 
very eventful first half in the first ever game for the New York Red Bulls. Goal scoring chances both ways. A penalty kick saved by Miller on Stoltz, an injury that we've had man, come out. A yellow card as well. There's been a lot of action going on both ends of the field. As the sun begins to peak out, we get confirmation from the fourth official that it will be two, at least two minutes of stoppage time in this first half. And of course, you can stay here for all of your second half action as well as first half highlights coming up on a heavy day of both USL and MLS action throughout the United States and Canada. And we're so glad that you've chosen to spend your afternoon here for this historic game. Obakop trying to get around McMahon. He finally does the cross over the top of everything and out for a goal kick. But you can see Obakop starting to get a couple openings against McMahon. McMahon has done such a good job defending him at that right back position. But Obakop, what you love about him as a player is he's relentless, constantly trying to take his man on and try and create for his teammates. And Coach Wolinek is was a classic striker himself. He was a target striker. He loved to finish off service. And he thinks he has a guy up top in Sonis who can do the same. And he feels like with the guys he's bringing in to play on the wing from the MLS first team, including Leo Stoltz behind, he thinks Chris Sonis is going to have the opportunity to score a lot of goals. Long touch there. Dixon now in some open space. Gets it to Mendoza to counter. Mendoza tries to get it over the top. Well played, though, by Heffron. And Borges, how calm is he with pressure on him? Gets it out wide. Monosalves with the good back heel. Red Bulls, great connecting play here. They get Monosalves down the left side. Monosalves, then PSL. Red Bulls, man, gets it in the middle. Still alive for Sanis. Sanis can't control on his first touch. It's cleared wide. The Red Bulls, not a lot of time now. Jamie Thomas slips on his service, and it'll roll to Brandon Miller. But the best build-up play that we've seen of the game so far for the New York Red Bulls, too, to close out the first half from Johnny Mendoza that were dangerous, cleared off the line by the Red Bulls in those first 10 minutes. And then Rochester got more and more of the possession. They got Valeski in on those two breakaways. Alex Dixon was extremely dangerous down the left side. Conrad Plua, the center back, for the New York Red Bulls, too, was forced to go out with an injury. Borges checked in the academy player in his first ever professional game, and Coach Bob Lilly of Rochester immediately puts Dixon on Borges' wing, and as a tip of the cap now to Borges, Dixon has swapped back to his original left midfield position, so Borges was able to get through that early test. We saw his confidence on the ball as well right at the end of the first half as he helped the Red Bulls create a decent goal-scoring chance. And so it's been a good debut so far for Borges at left back as Obakop there gets his cross blocked. It's going to go out for a throw-in. Marius Obakop, one of the four Red Bulls first-team players that have been loaned down for this game. And he has been in a great battle as Brandon Miller. I don't think a goalkeeping coach would be happy with the way he went and took that. An over-the-shoulder catch. Football style there going back towards his own goal, but he's able to take it. Obakop and McMahon, like I was saying, have been in a great battle down that flank. Oh, McMahon playing at right back, one of the returning starters for this Rochester team. This Rochester team returning 10 starters from last year, but they are missing their number one goal scorer as well as their starting goalkeeper from last year. And so while there's continuity, there's still question marks. And I know Coach Lilly talked with the media this week as well as myself. And a lot of the members of the media felt there's a little bit of a twinkle in the eye for him. He has a confidence in this team. He thinks he's got something special. He's a tireless scouter going out, finding the right talent, bringing in players from around the world, including a 28-year-old Scottish goalkeeper, Sean Murdoch, who he's bringing in from Hibs over in the Scottish Premier League, one of the biggest teams in Scotland. Murdoch wasn't able to get his clearance for this game, so Brandon Miller got the start, but he will be in the future. Castano, once again, a big save from him, leaping across his box to get that cross knocked away and then cleared out for a corner kick. Castano here at full extension as this one got chipped over the top of DeFonte, and it's cleared out. 
from the starting lineup, the only change that we've seen so far, Borges has checked in at left back and Colin Heffron has moved over to center back to cover for Palua as Castano makes another save off a corner kick and Red Bulls too have done a good job keeping out goals on these set pieces, but they have not done a good enough job marking. You see here, once again, another free header for Tony Walls, who had that initial opportunity cleared off the line by Jamie Thomas. Castano is forced to make the save, but Coach Wolnick won't be happy with how much work his goalkeeper has been forced into on these corner kicks. Manolo Sanchez there gets it taken away. Jamie Thomas plays it over the top. Manolo Sanchez started the game at center forward, and Chris Sanis started out wide right. They've swapped pretty much since the first 10 minutes of the game. Sanis, number 45, playing up top, a guy who's capable of scoring goals. He's already had a good professional career already. Coming over from Iceland, where he scored goals, he played in USL already for Orange County. And he scored goals everywhere he's gone. Out of Division II, Southern New Hampshire University. But he said he's had opportunities early on in PDL as well as professional overseas to see that he was good enough to play with any Division I player as well as the pro players. And now he is one of those hardened veterans. A chance here to come to try and prove himself to the New York Red Bulls. First team that he can play there. But not only that. Learn from a guy like Bradley Wright Phillips. Tied the record for goals scored in a season in MLS history last year. This one's picked off. Red Bulls fail to counter. Leo Stoltz loses out there. Tosh did a good job clearing through on that. Sanis, great layoff play from him to Manolo Sanchez. Sanchez tried to play Sanis into space. It looked like he had an opportunity to switch the field to Obakop. And now the battle continues here on this close wing right below us. As Leo Stoltz gets it knocked away and out for a throw in. You see Coach Bob Lilly right there. The black coat, the black hat. He's been a head coach in U.S. soccer for years. He's been around USL for a long time, but it's a new USL now. You got to go visit uslsoccer.com, get the latest news and live stats, and check out the new social media hub, USL Soccer. Coach Bob Lilly was around when it was the A League, when it was USL, when it was USL Pro, it was USL Pro 2, and now United Soccer League, United as one, ready to move into the future, and it's a bright future for this league. Coach Lilly moved immediately from playing for the Hershey Wildcats into coaching, made the playoffs in his first year. He has a funny history because a lot of his teams, of course everyone has made the playoffs every year he's coached, have lost to the Rochester Rhinos in their penultimate game, but now he works for the Rhinos and he's ready to end a season on a win. He's ready to win a championship again for this Rochester Rhinos teams. Obakop here, finally able to get the better of McMahon. The nutmeg there. But the cross blocked away by De Castile. The first round draft pick for the Colorado Rapids at a Notre Dame. And Leo Stoltz with the service. Curls it in. Cut it off. The shot taken by Manosalves blocked away. It looked like Tony Walls both times. And Stoltz now turns, gets by Mendoza. Lays it off for Obakop. Obakop's got space, trying to get it on his left foot. He's got two here. Manolo Sanchez with the shot, and Brandon Miller, good job getting his outstretched hand down and making that save. Manolo Sanchez, his first good opportunity, his first look. The link up there between the two MLS first team players, Obakop and Sanchez. Brandon Miller has made another fine save after that PK save. He's had a strong game so far, taking over. That first team spot, and he's got an opportunity now with Sean Murdoch not able to get clearance quick enough to play in this first game. Brandon Miller has a chance to claim that first starting spot. Last year, he and John McCarthy looked like they were going to battle it out for the number one goalkeeping spot. John McCarthy took over one USL Rookie of the Year, earned himself a contract this year, but Rochester Rhino sold him along to the Philadelphia Union, and he is now on that MLS roster sitting behind Algerian World Cup 
veteran, Rice and Boley. And so Brandon Miller once again will battle it out for the third time for the number one job in Rochester. Manosalvis will be called for the handball. You can see the buildup play. You can see the interchange starting to come for the Red Bulls as the understanding gets there. Also, as they knock off a little bit of rust, not only is it their first game as a team, but it's these players' first competitive game versus a new opponent for a little while. Mainly, it's just been scrimmages and in-practice games. Rochester had five preseason games. They went 4-1 and one in those games. Excuse me, 4-0-1, oh drawing on the road against the Ottawa Fury. They were able to knock off four college teams in the area, including Syracuse University and Cornell University. They actually have one player currently on their roster in Asani Samuels, who's still a college player, or excuse me, still a college student, at Canisius University, where he was their leading scorer last year and in classes early in the week and coming and training with Rochester later in the week so far in preseason until he's able to graduate and come full-time. He's a player they're really excited about. Pace for him, a dangerous player, a guy who's going to take players on and create. Jamie Thomas will have the throw in here. And for all of your USL League news and interactive content. Become a fan of USL on Facebook, USL on Facebook, and you will get all of your pictures, your content, your news to follow this league. 24 teams now in this league from coast to coast in two different countries. A lot to follow and a lot you want to keep up on. You have new teams out in Colorado and the switchbacks as well as in Tulsa coming back with the original NASL name of the Roughnecks. Great flick on there from Tsanis. DeFonte wins that header. Looks like Rolf's going to try and get behind him, but he's going to be called off sides. And so much to follow. You have the Cascadia teams who are going to battle it out in, this year in USL as well as MLS. As a mistake there. Stolen by, it looked like, Colin Rolf. On Zajac. Zajac has made very few mistakes in his first professional game. Veliski as it looks like the Rochester Rhinos turning up the physicality a little bit. Maybe seeing an advantage that they haven't really tried to push so far in this game. Mendoza dropping back. Mike Garzi, a Colgate University graduate. Another New York native as well on the field. A player Bob Lilly really likes. Excuse me, New Milford, Connecticut native is Mike Garzi. And he's played a strong game so far in the midfield alongside the captain, Tony Walls. Tosh puts it, pushes it down the wind to Dixon. Defont. And Jamie Thomas can't stop the pass in. Leo Stoltz, great cover work there from the captain. And he gets right back to his feet as he receives the ball. Leo Stoltz, good job reading the game there, anticipating that play and helping out his defenders. The Red Bulls, a lot of open space now. Can they counter? Manuel Salves has Obakop to his left. Pushing it out in front of him. Obakop's going to try and beat McMahon. McMahon gets one touch to it. Obakop can't beat him back to the second opportunity. And it rolls out. For a throw-in, New York Red Bulls, you see, New York Red Bulls 2 there, you see, preparing their second substitution of the game. And it's going to be another academy kid in Etienne. New York Red Bulls 2, a great opportunity there to counterattack open space. They haven't had many opportunities like that. Manal Salves pushed it in front of Obakov. Obakov really didn't have many options except take his man on, and McMahon has been on him all day. He does a very good job of not reaching in, tackling too early, giving Obakop open space to run into, and he was able to do just enough to push Obakop off and earn a goal kick. That bull's working around that back line. 
Monsalves now. The through ball, he thought he had a handball there. Referee's not seeing it the same way. And now Dixon with space. We haven't seen much of him yet in the second half. He was a big threat in the first half. That's blocked and it'll go out and we'll have the substitution coming through and it looks like Victor Monosalves, the Seton Hall grad center midfielder who played with the U23 NPSL championship team last year. New York Red Bulls too. His game is finished so far. He's the second substitution for the New York Red Bulls. And Derek Etienne, New York Red Bulls Academy player. Haitian U-20 international coming on for Manuel Salves. We'll see if it's a straight swap or if he'll move positions a little bit. Etienne is a University of Virginia commit. He'll be going there next year. But first, he's going to get an opportunity to play against some of the top players in the country here with the New York Red Bulls, too. All season, 28 games is the season. The academy players will be assessed each week whether or not they'll bring up five, whether we'll bring the same five, a new five. Etienne's family, a lot of experience with the U.S. soccer system. His father and his uncle both played internationally for Haiti as well as for the Long Island Rough Riders. And so they know this system very well. So Etienne... A great opportunity to learn from them as well as from the coaches here at the New York Red Bulls. And we'll see if he can fit in as strongly as his teammates Kyle Zajuk and Borges, as we see gets taken down there, have. Borges really impressed with him coming on in an emergency for a substitution. 17-year-old kid playing in his first professional soccer game in the big house in front of the crowd. And he has stepped in immediately. He's looked confident, has made no mistakes so far. So you see him there, Borges number 39, and he has been a really strong player so far today. A positive for this Red Bulls program, for this Red Bull club to look at. Stoltz has had the best goal scoring chance of the game, still 0-0. That penalty kick attempt in the first half that was saved by Brandon Miller. Manolo Sanchez tries to turn in space. But it's red by the center back for Rochester. And we might be seeing a change now. It looks like it's going to be at left back. So Julian Ringhoff, a rookie for the Rhinos out of the University of San Diego. A German native will check in for Tosh. Tosh had a great battle at left back. He worked really hard throughout the game. Julian Ringhoff bringing some fresh legs. And throughout the game, as well as throughout the week, you can follow all your New York Red Bull 2 action on Twitter. Follow New York Red Bulls 2 on Twitter and Facebook at NYRB2. Join the conversation for this match on social media using the hashtag NYVROC. New York versus Rochester, the in-state rivalry. The New York, New Jersey Red Bulls versus the Rochester Rhinos located up north about five and a half hour drive up towards Buffalo. The Red Bulls two next opponent coming from a similar area, Toronto FC two. And that's an exciting team to watch. But Etienne now trying to make something happen. Red Bulls two still looking for their first ever goal. That pass is cut out as it goes towards Obacop. And it looked like Ringhoff coming in. Straight swap at left back for the Rhinos. A bad pass there from Castano's intercepted. Good work, though, in the end from Heffron to win that back. Colin Heffron, another player who has had a very strong day, started out the game at left back, has moved in to center back due to injury and has stepped in seamlessly. As Manolo Sanchez picks up the foul there. Manolo Sanchez, a Philadelphia native. Went to University of Louisville, as you see here. Takes his man on, he's able to earn the foul. Transferred to Clemson University after his freshman year. Played three strong years. Was a third round draft pick of the New York Red Bulls. 
and scored the game winner in the preseason against the Oklahoma City Energy down in Florida. New York Red Bulls won that game. First team won that game 1-0. Earned himself a contract and is now playing with the Red Bulls too. And it looks like we do have a formation change or at least a movement change for the Rhinos. It looks like Apostolopoulos has gone from center back to left back and Ringhoff has gone in at center back. And now we have two more substitutions coming for the Rhinos. The first one coming in looks like number 10, Steven Dos Santos, the Cape Verde native, Cape Verde native in place up top for Colin Rolfe. And the second substitution which we have coming up still is Asani Samuels, guy I mentioned, the Canisius College graduate, or Canisius College student, but alumni player, checking in for Johnny Mendoza, and Castano will be happy to see the back of Mendoza. His set-piece service has been dangerous all game. Don't forget, in USL soccer, you get five substitutions a game, so Coach Lilly still has an opportunity to change this game up but I'll point out the first thing that he did for you in that Steven Dos Santos checks in at about six foot five, and that's the new element to this game. See him there towering over the players around them. We'll see how the Red Bulls are able to handle that. Etienne on the ball, again, shows great footwork, but gets it nicked off him in the end. Asani Samuels, the substitute, pushing it out wide for Steven. Steven, 25 years old, a Cape Verde native. First year with this team as well as Samuels, both of these players. First year Rochester Rhino players. Asani Samuels of Jamaica, national. He had 16 goals and six assists in his Canisius College career. Dixon pushing it back. Goes across the back line there. You see Julian Ringhoff pushing it wide to McMahon, so he's slotted in at center back. Like we said before, like I said before, Apostolopoulos has pushed out to left back. Vasily Apostolopoulos coming over from Greece. He's played professionally in his home country, Greece, in the second division for three years. Sanchez tries to take him on, whips that ball in. Just knocked away ahead of Tsanis. Etienne has been dangerous throughout this game. Has looked good every time he's gotten on the ball. Now Stoltz tries to create something for his teammates. His cross comes in too low, but the Red Bulls starting to pin this Rhinos team back. Rochester, like we said, they had to travel. A truncated preseason for them. And maybe starting to show that where but the New York Red Bulls too. It does not stop here. Next week against Toronto FC 2 on Saturday, April 4th at 3.30 p.m. For tickets and more information, visit NewYorkRedBulls.com or call 1-844-22-RBNY2. That's 1-844-22-RBNY2. And that's a big game to come out for. Next week, the Red Bulls 2 versus Toronto FC 2. I said at the beginning of the broadcast, Toronto FC2 fell last week on the road at the Charleston Battery at Blackbaud Stadium 3-2 after going up 2-0. Charleston bat battled back in front of a crowd at one of the best soccer-specific stadiums in the United States out there in Charleston. And really the Charleston Battery, a model for what USL wants their teams to be as well as the Sacramento Republic FC they filled Bonnie Field once they finished it last year and were able to win the USL Championship in their inaugural season following the model that Orlando City put together as they move towards promotion to, the, to Major League Soccer and a substitution now for the New York Red Bulls. Coming in for the first time, Alex Clay, number 56 for Manolo Sanchez. Manolo Sanchez... One of the four players, and as he comes out, he was called over, and now he's discussing something with John Wolinek. Wolinek, like I said, sees this as an opportunity for development to get these players better. Wolinek, an attacking player himself, and one of the great 
lines from him as we see Alex Dixon chance here, but he gets pushed back. Jamie Thomas does a good job covering. Garzi still tries to make something of it. He does a great work to stay on the ball. And Red Bulls, too, are able to clear eventually. Obakop trying to steal it off of McMahon. McMahon's able to come away with it. Great work there from Patrick McMahon. But I asked John Wolnick, do you think that this is a safety net now? Do you think there are enough players in the U.S. that are falling through the cracks? And he said, yeah, I know it because it was almost me. He said, I went from being on an MLS team to, om to falling out of the 18, the game day 18 of an A-League team one year later. And then he said he was both driven and fortunate in that he was eventually able to work his way into Major League Soccer. And we know the outstanding career that he eventually had with the New York Metro Stars, the New York Red Bulls, the LA Galaxy, the Chicago Fire, the Columbus Crew. But he knows from firsthand experience what these players are going through. And I think that's going to give him a great opportunity to connect with these players. Good tackle there from Borges in front of Asani Samuels. He can't save it from going out of bounds. Throw in here for Rochester. The last 10 minutes or so has been all Red Bulls offensively. Rochester had the more chances in the first half. Red Bulls, of course. Red Bulls, too, of course, with that. Penalty kick to, for Leo Stoltz was the best opportunity of the first half. Valeski had those two breakaways that he wasn't able to finish. And Jamie Thomas had that clearance off the line. But Castanos had a much quieter second half than he did first half. Improvement there for John Wolinek and his boys. So much to learn, so much to adjust to here in this first game. But it's been a great performance so far. We've seen quality soccer on both sides. We've seen... Some good tenacious play as well. Sanus looks to bring that down. Stolen off him by Walls. Walls with the ball over the top. Valeski tries to take Heffron on. Heffron, good defending out in space, but he loses possession. Unfortunate in the end that it goes off of Dixon and out for a throw-in and an opportunity for you guys to go to Twitter and follow at USL on Twitter. Become a league insider. Join club conversations and have a chance at exclusive giveaways at USL on Twitter is the place to be. We, like I said, with 24 teams now, so much news to try and get on top of, so much going on, so many signings coming in and out, transfers up and down, young prospects, hardened veteran players like Rodrigo Lopez and Aaron Wheeler, Wilmington Hammerheads. Some really good players playing in the USL this year. Some exciting players to come out and watch. And no more an example of the quality of this league than Jose Villarreal, who played with the LA Galaxy 2 last year, who started out this year in place of the retired Landon Donovan and has stepped in seamlessly and produced for the LA Galaxy. And a lot of that goes down to his experience that he got in USL and his chance to play against some great players last year and get better and better. Dixon looking for an outlet. And here's this high pressure. Etienne leading the charge. The Haitian U-20 international was down in Jamaica with Haiti during the MLS draft, trying to qualify for the U-20 World Cup. They were not able to in the end. Great experience for him. Cleared away by Van de Castile. In a battle now. Neither team able to settle right now. As we get some confirmation from the sideline, another substitution preparing to come in. It looks like Canardo Forbes for the Rochester Rhinos, but we'll wait to get official confirmation on that. Looks like Jamie Thomas coming up, a little bit lame off that tackle, just fixing his socks. Alex Dixon, number three, you see there, he was a Houston Dynamo homegrown player. About three years ago, played three years at UNC, 
scored a wonder strike, his only goal in his 13 appearances for the Houston Dynamo to win it in the 95th minute. And had a great first year with the Rochester Rhinos last year and already looks like he's going to have a strong second year. He needs that final production. Only two goals last season. He's got to replace the production of J.C. Banks, who's left this team after being their MVP multiple years. Borges will take this throw in. It's Canardo Forbes still waiting. This one's going to go out off of Borges for a throw into the Rhinos. And the referee will hold it now. And get his substitution. And it looks like Bob Lilly is going to make his change now. Canardo Forbes coming in. And he comes in in place of Valeski up top. Christian Valeski's had a strong game. I said he was the 32nd pick of the draft in the second round by the Portland Timbers. Felt like he'd get more playing time here with the Rochester Rhinos. He's a Southern Illinois University grad, a Saluki. And he had, a, I think, a very good first game. Had those two breakaways on his right foot that he wasn't able to finish, but a lot of that is to the great the outstanding goalkeeping of Castano. Valeski, a very promising player for coach Bob Lilly. And you can see why. And you can see why Coach Lilly really likes this guy. He teamed him with Rolf immediately in his first game. And you can see the talent that's there, the quality that's there. This Rochester team once again here today, resolute defending for them. Outside of the penalty kick attempt, they haven't given up a lot of goal scoring opportunities. They've gotten key blocks in when they've had to. They've read the passes. They've stayed very composed when Red Bulls have tried to Red Bulls too have tried to pull them out of place, pull them from side to side. Red Bulls too have had a couple good moments of interchange. Sanis has been strong, of course, as he loses it there. I say that with his back to goal. The foul comes in in the end by Zajuk. And Dos Santos lips, limps away there, Steven Dos Santos. An opportunity to tell you that Nike is a proud partner of the USL. Follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all the latest Nike Soccer information. That's at Nike Soccer, nike.com slash soccer. McMahon pushing it forward. The question is, will we see the inaugural goal, the first ever goal in Red Bulls 2 history today? High pressure coming on here. Well handled, though, in the end by Brandon Miller. Pressure applied there by Alex Clay. Alex Clay, one of those full-time USL players signed on this roster, was... A University of Kentucky freshman didn't play that year, transferred to UAB and finished out his career at UAB before coming up to New York and signing with this Red Bulls 2 New York team. And the Red Bulls 2, it looks like, are preparing another substitution for them on the sideline. It looks like Another one of the academy kids, Juan Sanchez, is going to come in. But first, the academy kid, Derek Etienne, gets it wide. Can't finish. Etienne trying to get back on the ball. Tony Walls does a good job shielding him there and launching the counter. Alex Clay with the cross in off that right wing where he's swapped in in the same spot for Manolo Sanchez. And this Red Bull 2 team so far has shown a lot of the talent that's on the field. They're going to be a dangerous team to play against. Sanis pushing it wide to Clay to his right. Looks like he had Etienne out to the far side. Clay tries to get the crossway. He does knock down by Van de Castile. And then played calmly to the feet of Garzi. Van de Castile there very composed in his own box. 
and the Red Bulls right now. It's just that final ball. They've been finding more space to turn and run at the Rochester defense, but that final cross or through ball just hasn't been there yet. Zajac wide. Clay trying to produce that ball. Zajac with the first shot of the game for him, and he floats it over the top. And what a moment that would have been if Kyle Zajac scored the first goal as an academy kid in Red Bulls 2 history. And now we have the substitution coming for the Red Bulls. Officially. And it is the academy's leading goal scorer, Juan Sebastian Sanchez. He led the U18s in goals with 12. He was actually with the first team in the preseason down in Florida. And he's going to re replace Chris Sanis. Sanis, I thought, had a fantastic day today. Everything he did well except for the goal. The substitution for Rochester as well. And it looks like it's going to be a midfielder, Marcus Ugarte, who checks in in place of Dixon. Dixon was a threat throughout the first half, was a terror down the left wing for the Rochester Rhinos. Just couldn't get it going offensively in the second half. Full credit to DeFonte and Jamie Thomas for locking down that wing, making it tough for him to find space. A mistake there by the Rhinos. Red Bulls, too, look to counter into space. Etienne once again on the ball, and you have to love seeing a player like Etienne come in and be so confident to get himself on the ball, to cover throughout the field, to pick up the ball in different areas for a young kid playing alongside a Leo Stoltz, playing alongside a Victor Manosalves, a Chris Sanis. He has that confidence to check in and get himself on the ball. And I think the Red Bulls, too, will be hoping that Sanchez comes in with that same confidence and is able to finally finish off an opportunity as Obakop gets taken down there by Julian Ringhoff, the 26-year-old German rookie, and he gets the second yellow card of the game. Colin Rolf issued one in the first half, and Ringhoff now won here in the second half. Julian Ringhoff was a substitute in the second half, so he hasn't taken a lot of time. A call made here for Ringhoff. You could see the complaint. He clearly crosses in front of Obakop to stop the play, but there isn't a lot of violent conduct. But I think the referee making the call there because he's taking down Obakop as he has an opportunity to get by him and get in towards the 18. A free kick now for Red Bulls, too. It looks like Etienne, or excuse me, Obakop over it as he walks away, leaves it to Leo Stoltz. Leo Stoltz will try and find one of his teammates on the cross here. Brandon Miller has been immense so far today. A PK save as well as a big open field save. Stoltz's service is a little bit low. Ringhoff cleans up his own mess. The clearance. Jamie Thomas keeps it alive. Stoltz over the top. A good ball in but no runner on the end of it. Brandon Miller easily taking it for the Rochester Rhinos. The Rochester Rhinos, all of their games as well as all the New York Red Bull 2 games will be on YouTube USL. All USL regular season and playoff games are available live, free, and in HD on YouTube. Connect with the USL YouTube channel today. And I was watching it yesterday during the Charlotte Independent Charleston Battery games. All three games last week were on it. It was a nice little soft opening last week into a heavy stretch of games this week. And it helps you fill up your soccer calendar if you're like me and you're trying to get in as many games as you can on the weekends when you're away from work. Etienne over the top trying to find Sanchez. Sanchez gets through. Miller has to play it outside of his box. Dangerous moments there. McMahon now on the ball. Great ball there over the top from Etienne. The Red Bulls haven't really been able to find any quality over the top to get their strikers in. But Derek Etienne has stepped into this game and has really brought a spark and a flair offensively for the Red Bulls. Cut out there in the midfield. Rochester's attack has withered throughout this second half. Start, started so strong in the first half. Valeski with his two opportunities. Walls with a shot cleared off the line. Colin Rolfe had a few opportunities. The Red Bulls, too, have grown in confidence in this second half. And you can see the chemistry starting to come together, possessing the ball, moving it around the field, controlling play, 
and Derek Etienne right there. That beautiful first touch back to Heffron has been a big part of that. I have to go back to what Coach Wolinick said to me about IQ, soccer IQ and technique and talent for these academy kids being so vital as they step up to this next level and has been on display so far for every single one, the four academy players that have checked in. And I'm sure we'll see it later this season in Tyler Adams. Stoltz beats Steven there. And it goes off of Stoltz and out of bounds for a throw in. Just north of 83 minutes have gone by so far in this game. New York Red Bulls 2 trying to open up their franchise with a win. Rochester Rhinos start this season out on a five-game road trip. This, their opening game. They're on the road for the next four weeks. They actually open up at home against the Red Bulls, too, once again on April 26th. Anyone out in Rochester, make sure to get your tickets and get out to that game. An opportunity to see these two teams battle at it again, and it'll be fun to see that second chance for now these two teams to get a little bit of scouting on the new players, get a little scouting on the style, especially for Rochester, on this new, brand new New York Red Bulls 2 team and see how they adjust and then how the teams go from there. And that's one of the fun parts about teaching these players. Coach Wolnick was saying the adjustments, the in-game adjustments, the recognition are a big part of the development. He said if he sees something to take advantage of and he tells his players, especially the young players, what that is, how to how to go about taking advantage of it. That's a learning experience for them. Looks like Vasilis Apostolopoulos here suffering from a little bit of cramps. The referee called over for a trainer, but it's being taken care of on the field by Marcus Ugarte. Double duty here for Ugarte as trainer and player. You have to respect that. Ugarte just actually signed on Thursday. He's from a soccer playing family as well. His dad played semi-pro in Peru. His brother played at Bucknell. He played for two years at the University of Providence, who was a college cup team this year. And then he transferred and went to the University of Michigan for his last two years. Coach Lilly really likes him as a, a quick wide player. He said he's going to bring some energy, a quality left foot to the game. Maybe a little bit of a game breaker for them late in games. The Red Bulls, too, are looking for a game breaker themselves now. The cross comes in, cleared away. Stoltz on the top of the box. The volley knocked away at the last second, still alive. Obakop with the cross. Almost landed at the foot of Clay. He just couldn't control it with his first touch. And you see here, though, this was a golden chance. Leo Stoltz, it sits up for him. He curls it on the outside of his foot from the top of the box. Clean off the volley. It's knocked away, though. Obakop's deflected cross lands at the foot of Clay, and he wasn't able to react quick enough. And a chance goes away for the New York Red Bulls, too, to score that first ever franchise goal. The heat really starting to turn up here in the last few minutes. Asani Samuels goes to ground there. Right in front of the referee. No call made. Ref Red Bulls 2 do win possession. Obakop. Quick 1-2 with Borges. Trying to go long now to Sanchez. Good work from the Rochester Rhinos to get it out of pressure there. Ugarte. Trying to link up with his left back. And Van de Castile sprays that ball out wide right. Great work here from the Rhinos, but Castano, who's had a very quiet second half after a high-pressure first half, reads that one well. But loses possession immediately off the punt. Steven battling, gets it inside to Agarte. If Agarte could turn on this, he could have gotten a shot away. But Heffron reads the danger once again. Colin Heffron has had a huge game today. Started at left back. Was able to keep Johnny Mendoza quiet. And then forced to move into center back in the second, or throughout 
in the middle of the first half, and he's done a very good job there putting out fires. A substitution coming up for the Red Bulls, preparing to make one, and it's going to be Franklin Castellanos, an Iona graduate. He played alongside Manuel Salves in that NPSL championship winning team for the U23 Red Bulls. We'll let you know who he comes in for as soon as we can. And this is one of the good parts about this five substitution opportunity for the New York Red Bulls in USL that they just allow more players to get minutes under their legs. Don't have to over push players. Clay knocked away there at the last second. Great clearance in the end by Apostolopoulos. Otherwise, Clay was going to be able to square that ball middle. You see here the long ball over the top board just once again showing his quality. Curls it to that far, far post, and Apostolopoulos knocks it away just before Clay could square that in. Obakop to take now, the left-footed cross. Just under 89 minutes left to play here on the top of the six-yard box. Cleared away once again there. By Rochester, Borges trying to keep it alive, but Obakop is going to get called for offsides, and you're never happy with a play like that. Obakop down on the end line, uh, excuse me, down on the sideline, opportunity to look straight across the line, has to make that effort to get himself back on sides. He's had a great game throughout, attacking the Rochester Rhinos defense and creating opportunities, but let an opportunity go there because of that poor play. And Brandon Miller now. Kicking along. Rochester, not many opportunities here in the second half. The substitutes have got, brought them some good energy. And it's gotten stronger as the second half has gone along. Asani Samuels gets it taken off of him. By Zajac. Sanchez trying to lay it off for Clay. And he can't. And the referee will see if he'll stop play for the substitution. No, he'll continue. Playing it, switch field there. And the fourth official has given us the confirmation that at least two minutes of stoppage time will be played as we hit the 90 minute mark in a nil-nil game so far. And Asani Samuels called off sides. Castano was there to cover anyway. Santiago Castano has to be the man of the match so far for the New York Red Bulls, too, in their inaugural game. Had some heavy work in the first half to keep this Rochester Rhinos team quiet. And now here in the second half, he's been perfect on everything he's had to do. And Marius Obakop. One of the four MLS first teamers checks out in replace in place of Franklin Castellanos. Castellanos will get a couple minutes of a run out and Wolinek there talking to Obakop, pointing to his head, saying, You got to be smart. It was a great performance today from Obakop. He's a player who could really make a difference at this level, keep himself sharp as he gets ready for his opportunity at the next level. And every time we've seen him come in, in his seven MLS appearances as well as today, always that willingness to take on the fenders, to take risks, to take chances, and that can be so rare in players. And the Red Bulls, as well as the Red Bulls too, don't want to stime that. Clay here was played in from Derek Etienne. Etienne has been phenomenal off the bench, showing his quality, as has Borges. You see there that ability takes the ball down, gets it to Jamie Thomas, and Thomas controls possession. Defonte squaring it to Heffron. Defonte of Heffron, been solid center back pairing after Plua went out with an injury. Flicked on there from Sanchez. Brandon Miller will take his time. He'll look to punt forward, and this may be the last, not one of the last few plays of this game. Just a few seconds of stoppage time to go. Some added time due to that substitution. But a great first game so far for both teams. Either team would love to get a late winner to steal three points. That jolt of energy that they'd get. 
coming off a game like this, but it won't be the case.